Well, she's just set up, as all of you will notice, and she's essentially kind of just waking up. She would have spent the whole day snoozing. It's been a very hot day, and leopards prefer to move when it's cool after dark. And like I said a little bit earlier, actually, I'm not sure if I've told the school, she does have a kill nearby. She caught an antelope called a waterbuck. Some of that kill remains in that kill that she may well call her cub out of its little hiding place. And if we're very lucky, we'll see this cub come running through to mom, may drink a little bit of her milk, and she loves playing with mom's tail. So, sadly though, I think she's heading away from where we last saw the cub, but I'm told she may have brought a little piece of meat from the kill into this area, and maybe that's where she's heading. Michael, you would like to know what kind of behavior we look for when looking for leopards. Well, usually it's, you know, not the leopard itself necessarily. The behavior of other animals helps lead us to leopards. For example, if we hear monkeys alarm calling or impala, a kind of antelope, even a lot of birds will alarm call when they see a leopard. So it's the behavior of other animals that helps us find leopards. Um, it's a very tricky thing to do. We also spend a lot of time following their down to try and work out where they are. Now, I think she's, I think she has pulled out a piece of meat, or maybe she's thinking about it. I just got the idea that she moved some bushes, and often when leopards do have a piece of meat down on the ground, they'll kind of cover it with leaves and branches. And you see how she's moving through some quite thick bush now. She could be pulling out that piece of meat. There it is. It's in her mouth. You got Josh, you would like to know how big is this leopard and how 11 years old. I'm guessing she weighs somewhere around 40 kilograms, maybe 50 at the most, which is about 100 pounds. So they're not very big cats. Not nearly as big as lions. A lioness, a female lion, will be twice or almost three times the size of a female leopard. So, <laughs> sadly, she's decided to feed facing away from us, but she may move around again. Alex, you would like to know if black panthers are secretly leopards, and yes, that's exactly what a black panther is. Um, but I think it, it depends on where you are in the world, Alex. Um, in America and in South America, you get uh, jaguars, and you can get black versions of a jaguar, just like here in Africa, we can get black versions of a leopard. So we usually just call black leopards over here, but I'm guessing what happens in South America where you get the jaguars is that's where they are called. You sometimes also get a very pale form. You also get a, not an albino, but a whitish color that sometimes happens. And it's not common, but you sometimes do get a kind of pale shade. What has Ferg spotted? Has Ferg got a surprise for us? He may well. Look at that! Well done, Ferg. It's the little cub. It's coming to join Mom. Hello, you. I haven't seen you for such a long time. And you... How awesome is this, guys? This is a tiny little leopard cub. We think it's about three months old. And... We've been very, very lucky. We've seen it quite a lot over the last three months. And I'm guessing it's heard its mom crunching down on her dinner. And the cub probably wants to come and join her. How cool. Well done, Ferg. And Tristan, who will see some really interesting behavior. And the little cub was very, very playful. And it likes to attack mom, especially her tail, which you can see. 
she's holding up right now. It's the perfect toy for that cub to play with. Good. Well, we'll wait for this cub to pop out and we'll call you back as soon as it does. And we're going to send you across to Tristan, who's got some of this leopard's favorite food. The cub tried to come up to mom and interestingly, mom was hissing at her, not wanting to share dinner with her baby. So, very strange behavior, but sometimes a lot of things that happen in nature are difficult for us as humans to understand. So, who knows why mom isn't interested in sharing just yet. Maybe she wants to teach the cub some manners and tell it to wait a little bit before coming and trying to gobble up this food. And it is also important to remember that the cub doesn't only rely on meat. It's still drinking milk and it will continue to drink milk for about another three months. So... Maybe mom's given it enough milk for the day. Time will tell. I'm not too sure where the little cub is at the moment, but it could poke its head out at any second, so you can help us keep an eye out for that. Stay with mom. And it kind of varies. It depends on the mother and the cub. So it can be as early as 12 months of age, so at one year the mother may kick out her cub be it a boy or a girl and then they need to start looking after themselves or it could be as late as two years so it does depend but on average anywhere around 18 months a year and a half is the average length of time that cub try and stay longer if they could but the mother will usually chase them off because she will start getting ready to have her next cubs and she can't look after two sets of cubs at once and that's why she needs to chase off the older ones who need to start looking after themselves and I guess it's not very different to us humans we get to an age where eventually our parents will say no more pocket money for you you need to start looking after yourself so this little cub still got a long time before that happens though are we getting some great views of her nibbling on her dinner and I know you've been chatting about decomposers with Tristan. Leopards are up against one of the world's most efficient decomposers, the fly. And a lot of flies will be buzzing around this kill, laying their eggs on it. And if a leopard's kill is big enough, there may even be a few maggots crawling around it by the end. Finishes it, because it can be three or four days if they catch something big like an impala. Ray, you would like to know when are the animals most active? Well, uh, if we... Because all animals... I mean, there's so many different animals here that it would be tricky to answer that, that your question just with all the animals in mind. But with leopards, definitely after dark, under cover of darkness, and also when it's cool. So... And I guess that's kind of applicable to most animals, especially in this area that we're in that can get very, very hot and humid in our summer. It can be very, very sweaty here and hot. But in our winter, it can be quite cold. Let's have a quick look on the left here, Ferg. It looks like the cubs sneaking up somewhere. I'm not sure what it's trying to catch. It could be trying to catch little grasshoppers. It could be practicing its hunting on something small like a butterfly. Or what are you trying to pounce on? Or are you just chasing your own little tail? Well, there's another little glimpse of the cub. I'm hoping it's going to come out into a slightly better spot for you guys to see it. But for now, we'll take this. And On the topic of little cubs and practicing their hunting, they are born with the instincts ready to hunt. They know how to hunt just like a lot of your cats at home may catch birds or squirrels from time to time and their mothers wouldn't have taught them how to hunt. It's just their instinct. Hello you. <laughs> how cute is that? Absolutely awesome. Adeline you would like to know if leopards are purely carnivorous and yes all the big cats of Africa only eat meat and 
I guess that's all the big cats around the world, to be honest. Other than very occasionally, just like, again, your domestic cats and dogs may nibble on a few blades of grass to make them, uh, which helps them, it's kind of like medicine, you could say. Sometimes dogs and cats will eat grass to help them throw up. And if they wanting to throw up, they may have some bones or some fur balls or something funny in their stomach. So that's why cats and dogs will do that from time to time. It's their own kind of medicine, but that's not food. It's just a way for them to clean out their tummy. Interestingly, though, they're not too fussy when it comes to meat. They'll eat tortoises, antelope, fish, birds, just about anything. Tania, you would like to know how do I remember which animal is which? In terms of which leopard is which or which animal is which, I guess it all just comes with spending time out here and practicing. But I don't always get it right and sometimes I get it wrong and I get confused. Sometimes I mistake one leopard for another or sometimes I call one bird by the wrong name. So I guess just like anything in life, if you spend enough time doing it, it becomes easier. So I guess that's the main thing to remember. We spend day in and day out here without too many distractions and that helps us get familiar with all these different animals. What can that little cub sniff? I wonder if it's not sniffing where mom was lying earlier. Their senses are so much better than ours and that's always something to remember when dealing with wild animals is that often their hearing, their sight, their smell, everything is just so much better than us. I can only smell tasty kind of takeaway foods or big restaurants that I walk past. But these guys have got far better senses than we do. Okay, well, we're going to race you off from this cute little cub to a beautiful sunset with Tristan. Well, I'm sure you had a great time with Tristan and the sunset and the starling. Now, Tundi's moved position, and I think she could well have moved the food away from the cub. So, again, very, very surprising that she's not sharing her food with this youngster. And she's almost kind of taking it away from her. So, I don't understand why. She doesn't want to share it. Let's have a quick look at... I oh know the cubs just kind of slunk off again. It was kind of poking its head out, but it's heading towards mom now. So let's see what happens as the cub does get closer to mom. Earlier on, when the cub first kind of woke up and caught up with mom, mom hissed and snarled at her, which was really interesting because that wasn't the kind of motherly love I was expecting to see. But again, often in nature, some things just don't make sense to us as humans. Kira, you would like to know why do the animals not run away from us? And it's a good question because if we were to wind back the clock a couple of hundred years and we were to drive into this area, every animal that saw us would run for their lives. And there's two reasons for that. The funny vehicles we're driving around takes a while for the animals to get used to. And also the fact that our great, 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 great grandparents used to hunt animals. And that was how we used to get our food. So animals are kind of instinctively quite scared of people and for a good reason. But here in this reserve where people can only come in if they know about guiding and taking people through the bush and there's no hunting here so we only ever look at the animals and this reserve has been open for nearly 60 years now so for 60 years we've slowly been getting these animals used to us as humans used to our vehicles and if you think of this mother leopard she gave birth to the cub and as soon as the cub was very young we started seeing it and the cub would see its mother that was completely relaxed with us and therefore the cub learned from its mom that we aren't dangerous however if a hyena came onto the scene mom would have given that cub some warning calls and told the cub be careful there's some hyena coming or there's some lion coming 
but she doesn't do that with us. So even the cub now from a very young age is getting used to us, and we call that habituation. So they are slowly becoming habituated. They're not tame, they're still completely wild animals, and if we were not respectful, and if we got out the vehicle and walked towards, towards in our, there's a good chance she would attack us. But we obviously don't want to do that, and all we want to do is... Oh, she's... She's hissing and snarling. The cub has got a little bit closer. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it, but Ferg can try and show you. There, you can just see the little white tip of its tail. Um, so the cub's probably about three or four meters away from Mom, and Mom's not being very hospitable. Alison, you would like to know what is the purpose of the spots on a leopard, and it's to help them blend in with their surroundings it's for camouflage so that they can sneak up on their prey and if they were just one color it would be very easy to see them and it's an important thing to remember with camouflage camouflage is not necessarily about color but it's more about shapes and you can see how all those little spots and rosettes you can see one rosette there which is kind of a round black circle with a caramel colored inside it all helps break the body up into lots of little pieces so with all the leaves and branches and all the different colors on the leopard, it makes it very difficult for anything to spot them. Whereas if they were just one color, it would be definitely a lot easier to work out their shape. Now oh, the cub's slowly trying to creep closer to mom, but mom still is not being very welcoming. I still haven't seen this little cub feed on meat yet, although Tristan did, and Tristan saw, I think, the first time. Hotog, and that was about a week or two ago. So, s surprise that mom's not sharing. She's definitely old enough to be eating meat. Irie, you would like to know how much food does a leopard eat per day? Well, it all depends on how lucky they are every day but it's not easy for them to catch food so some days they will not eat for two or three days and that's the same with lion and cheetah they don't need to eat every day their lives don't have the same routine as us they don't have breakfast lunch and supper but they kind of eat whenever they can but to kind of give you an idea of how much food a leopard needs to eat um, once their belly is full that would be about 20 pounds of meat and that will last them for three to five days but they do need to be able to eat themselves until their stomachs are very big because they need to gobble up their food before the lions or hyena come and steal it now are we gonna see this little cub pounce on mom it looks like she's thinking about it she's creeping up on her of course, Mom knows exactly where she is, but this little cub is doing its best to try and give Mom a little bit of a fright. But now she's also chewing on some branches. <laughs> and a typical young, curious cat just wanting to explore and have a good time. But Mom is not being very welcoming with her cub's plans. Okay, well exciting stuff with Tristan and those alarm calls. We were chatting about the behavior we look for when searching for leopards and I'm hoping he's going to get lucky before the end of the safari. They certainly are. I'm just trying to get us into a better, oh, a better spot, but we're not going to need to because the cub's taken off its own little piece of meat. And how cool is that? Mom eventually finished her dinner and allowed the cub to come down and she just took off her little tasty morsel there so I'm glad the cubs finally getting to snack down on meat and this is actually the first time that I'm seeing this it's definitely well into the period of her eating meat ah Lindsay you would like to know what is my favorite animal 
tricky question. It's probably out of the big cats. Well, it's definitely out of the big cats, the leopard, then the cheetah, then the lion. And you know, that question is impossible to answer because there's so many different types of sites things but the coolest thing I've seen a leopard do is probably have a tug of war with its meal and a hyena that was very exciting it was actually not too far from here and it was one of uh, this leopard called Tandy one of her younger stepbrothers I think it was quarantine maybe Kunyuma who was wrestling with a hyena over an Anyala carcass that was about two years ago but we get so spoiled here Lindsay we see so many incredible things well then I suggest you follow along for more of these safari live adventures because we really do get very very lucky with some and just creep forward a little bit so Ferg can show you Tundi for the last few seconds. There she is. Be sure to tune in and follow us on our Nat Geo TV show tomorrow. We need all the support we can get. See you there.